Before we get started, we just want to say thank you to HoloLens for sending us the Mars 4K for review before it is even launched. But we are not paid to say anything besides our own opinions and HoloLens does not get to see this video before it is published. Let's get straight to the point. As the name suggests, the HoloLens Mars 4K is a 4K wireless video transmitter that can support up to 4K 30 frames per second video transmissions wirelessly. As we mentioned in our other videos, a wireless video transmitter is an awesome investment for anyone who does work for clients. That is because if your clients can view the footage on set wirelessly, they will be super excited and happy and they won't be following the camera around just to peek at how the footage looks like. It gives a lot more space for the videographer or cinematographer to focus on their job. The joy of showing the footage to your clients on set is also going to make everything smoother during the filming process. It is much easier for everyone to work in a happy environment and to do any kind of adjustments if the footage is available to more people on set. Being able to stream 4K video signal used to be very expensive. If you search for 4K wireless video transmitters, you will see that they usually cost at least $2,000. And the HoloLens Mars 4K is definitely much more affordable at $700, which gives a great option to a lot of filmmakers with smaller budget. It is almost the same price as a lot of wireless video transmitters that can only transmit at 1080p HD. But keep in mind, the Mars 4K can only support 4K resolution up to 30 frames per second, and the signal range is around 450 feet. So if you want higher resolution, you just need to be a little bit closer to the transmitter with the Mars 4K. Yes, a lot of external monitors are at a lower resolution than 4K, but being able to transmit 4K video can future-proof your production level. And if you have a higher resolution monitor like a director's monitor, you will definitely appreciate the 4K resolution. That is usually not a problem if you are filming, let's say, a feature film because usually you will be filming at 24 frames per second and the transmitter and the receiver should be pretty close to each other. Unless you are streaming a concert or event where you will be very far away from the camera, then you might need to consider other transmitters. Hey guys, so now I'm going to show you guys the image quality of the HoloLens Mars 4K video transmitter. I have a Sony a7 IV connected to the transmitter filming the color checker and I have the receiver connected to my TV. The a7 IV settings is set to 4K 60p and as you know the transmitter can only transfer up to 4k 30 frames per second so it will default go to the highest speed and highest quality which is 4k 30 frames per second that's what you're looking at right now on my tv my tv and my computer monitors are the only display that i have that is 4k and it's capable of displaying 4k at 30 frames per second so this is how it looks like my recording camera right now is also filming in 4k so this is how it looks like all right guys, so now I have a HD video transmitter connected to the a7 IV with exact same settings. So I'm going to put the images side by side with the HD one and also the 4K from the Mars 4K. By looking at the TV with my own eyes, I can already tell that the HD transmitter is a little bit softer compared to the 4K one. So if you have a high definition monitor like the director's monitor, I would say definitely try to get the Mars 4K to future proof your gear so you have a cleaner and sharper image when it comes to monitoring with a wireless video transmitter. One very important feature of the Mars 4K is the support of both HDMI and SDI input. This is very important because SDI is the industry standard for a lot of high-end cameras and productions. So being able to future-proof your gear with both HDMI and SDI connection is always welcome. So you don't have to invest into a different set of wireless video transmitter in the future. When it comes to connectivity, the Mars 4K transmitter can connect to up to two receivers or four smart devices like the iPhone or iPad. If you are connected to one receiver, then you can only connect to two more smart devices. We highly recommend having a smart device with the app pre-installed for your clients on set to view the footage. The Mars 4K has a color LCD display and a four-way joystick for control. And we will show you a quick demonstration on how the menu and settings look like on the transmitter and the receiver. We will also show you how the app interface look like so you know what kind of features it comes with. 
When it comes to powering options, you have multiple choices. You can use a DC power supply, which a power brick is included in the box, or a USB-C charger, or what we usually use on set, a Sony NPF battery. We think the NPF battery option is the easiest and the most flexible. When it comes to build quality, the Mars 4K is fully made out of metal except the antennas, so we have no doubt on the durability side as long as you take good care of your gear. And the antennas are very interesting as well. It is a short, fat, round type instead of the ones that you can bend and twist around. Inside the box, it also comes with an extra antenna and a quarter 20 plate which you can use to mount the transmitter or the receiver horizontally so it doesn't stick up like super tall as a usual transmitter. But I wish they would include two quarter 20 plates instead of one. Now we're going to show you some of our test results when it comes to the performance level of the HoloLens Mars 4K so you can have a general idea of what to expect. Keep in mind that our tests are not scientific, but it is more of a practical use case test. All right, guys, now let's try to do a latency test on the Holodan Mars 4K video transmitter. Keep in mind that it really depends on your setup and the environment that you're in. It depends on the camera that you're using, the cable that you're using, and the monitor that you're using, and all the interference if you're using the app or the uh, transmitter with the receiver. So this is my setup. I have the BMPCC 4K camera connected to the Mars 4K transmitter via HDMI cable, and I have the monitor on the right-hand side here connected to the receiver via HDMI cable as well, so I'm not connected using SDI. So this is just my HDMI setup and I have the Hollyview app on my iPad mini connected to the transmitter as well. So I'm going to use an iPhone stopwatch to start a time and it will start moving as I hit the timer or the stopwatch on the iPhone and I'm going to freeze a frame on my computer screen so you guys can see the difference when it comes to the image showing on the BMPCC 4K, the time on there and also the time on the monitor and the time on the app to tell the difference when it comes to latency. This is just to give you a general idea. Again, this is not a scientific test, but let's get straight into it. So I will be using the time and I'm going to freeze a frame very quickly. Right here, we can see that on the camera monitor, we have seven second and 24, and we have six second and 93 on the monitor connected to the receiver. And I have seven second and 12 on the iPad via the app. So as we mentioned before, the app is quicker or has lower latency compared to the receiver for some reason via Wi-Fi. So that's why the time is closer when it comes to comparing the time on the camera screen and the iPad screen. And this is a little bit further away when it comes to the receiver showing the time. So the time difference between the iPad and the camera monitor, it's about 0.12 seconds. That is 120 milliseconds. So 0.12, it's 120 milliseconds. And on the receiver side, we have 6.93. If I am doing my math correctly, that's about 0.31 seconds or 0.3 seconds. That is 300 milliseconds of a difference between the receiver and the camera monitor. And I have the Mars 4K set to high quality mode. So this is the latency of high quality mode with my setup. So let's jump to the next mode, which is balanced mode. So now we're in balanced mode. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to let the time go for a little bit and I'm going to freeze the frame right here. On the camera screen, we have five seconds and 47. So 5.47 seconds. And on the receiver, we have 5.23. And on the app, we have 5.34. Again, the app is a little bit faster than the receiver. The difference between the app and the camera monitor, it's about 0.13. So 130 milliseconds. 
130 milliseconds when it comes to balance mode when you're using the app. That's the latency with my setup. And with the receiver, we have, let me do the math very quickly, that's 0.24 or 0.23 seconds that's 200 uh no 230 230 milliseconds so it is a little bit quicker when it drops the quality to normal mode that's the image quality coming out of the mars 4k i am in normal mode let's go to the last mode which is the speed mode that should give you even quicker or smaller latency between all the devices so a little bit speedier and now we're in the speed mode where I have the timer or the stopwatch started and I'm going to freeze the frame right here. On the camera monitor, we have 5.92 seconds and on the receiver, we have 5.68 and on the app, we have 5.76. So if I'm doing the math correctly, the latency, be latency between the app and the camera monitor, it's point one six so that's 160 milliseconds i don't know why it's a little bit longer when it's in actual speed mode but anyway the difference is quite small between normal mode and speed mode when it comes to the app at least with my setup that's 0.16 seconds that 100 that's 160 milliseconds on the receiver side we have points uh 5.68 so that is 0.24 seconds so that's 240 milliseconds when it comes to latency with this setup right here via hdmi between the camera monitor and the receiver so there is an improvement when you drop the a the image quality from high quality to normal but from normal to speed i don't see that big of a difference i don't know if it's just this setup or this time when we were testing the uh, latency it happens but it really depends again it depends on your setup your cables your monitor camera your entire environment when it comes to interference so definitely take a look at the device compare the latency and choose the mode that best suit your production All right, guys now i am doing the usual signal strength test on the rooftop i have a bmpcc 4k setup with the transmitter connected via hdmi cable and i have a monitor here again with an hdmi cable connected to the receiver like this and i'll be carrying the monitor and receiver and walk down the path and I will hit record on the BMPCC 4K so you can see that the timer will start counting down like this and on here I have the exact same thing so you can see that the signal is strong and there's no latency or lag or frame drops all right, so I have hit record on my camera and the timer is counting down on the monitor side as well. And I'm gonna walk down the rooftop. You can see that I am now in the frame. So now I'm at the end of the rooftop and the signal is still really strong. As you can see that the timer, the recording timer on the camera is still counting down smoothly and I don't see any problem with the signal and I'm gonna walk back so so far it's doing really well in terms of the transmitter connecting to the receiver when it comes to signal strength I don't see any frame dropping at all during this test again this is not a scientific test because your situation and your environment and your scenario might be different, but on an open site kind of environment, you don't really have to worry about the signal strength or frame dropping. But based on your environment, you might have any other interferences that will affect the performance of the transmitter and receiver. But so far, 
open line of sight, no problem at all. Hey guys, so this is the indoor signal strength test for the HoloLens Mars 4K. I am about two rooms away from the transmitter. I have the receiver and monitor with me, and I have two walls between me and the transmitter. As you can see on the camera recording timer, that it is still going smoothly without dropping frames. So this is a good news. Within a reasonable distance, some concrete walls should be okay. But again, it really depends on your environment and setup and everything around you when you are on set that might cause any kind of interference. But so far, I am very happy with the result. All right, so now I'm going to show you guys how to quickly set up the HoloLens Mars 4K with your camera and your monitor and also using the app to connect to the transmitter. So now I have the BMPCC 4K here using an HDMI cable connected to the transmitter, which is sitting at the top of my camera. I have a monitor mount right here that I can just push it down like this if I think that the setup is too tall. But as I said in the previous part of this video, there is a horizontal mount that you can use to horizontally mount this transmitter or the receiver onto your setup so it doesn't get too tall if it looks too tall to you or if it's too tall for you to use when you're filming. So that's how it works. And I have my monitor here using another HDMI cable connected to the receiver, which is sitting at the back right here. And the receiver is just using the horizontal mount mounted onto this handle right here. And that's pretty much all you need to connect the device to your camera and your monitor. Now you just need to power the devices. I have an NPF battery on both the transmitter and the receiver. Of course, you have the ability to use USB-C cable or power banks or the DC power plug that comes within the box to power either the transmitter or the receiver. But we like using NPF batteries because they're way, way more convenient and it powers these devices quite long. So it doesn't get into the way that much anyway. And it's convenient and the battery life is good. I'm just gonna power on the transmitter here. There's just a switch that is really tactile actually, surprisingly. And I'm gonna power on the receiver as well. It will take about five to 10 seconds for the devices to power on, and it will take about 10 to 20 seconds to, for them to match the channel automatically. So you don't really have to worry about that. If you want to switch these devices to a different group so you don't interfere or you have more than one set of these, you can just use the joystick to flip up and down the channel and it will just allow you to use another group to connect these two devices. Once they're connected, they should be showing the same number of channel. I have channel one on the transmitter and on the channel, not, not channel two, the receiver, I have channel one as well. So that means they are receiving or connected actually. So the camera is now on and I'm just gonna focus on to one part of my room. As you can see on the monitor, now it is receiving signal going from the transmitter or the camera using HDMI to the transmitter to the receiver using HDMI to the monitor. As I said, the HoloLens Mars 4K comes with SDI input and output as well. So you have the ability to use higher end cinema cameras with this set of wireless video transmitters, which is a really, really important thing because you want to make sure that your gear is future-proof. So when you are into more higher-end production, you don't have to buy another set of transmitter that comes with SDI. The latency of this setup is not bad, actually. It's surprisingly good considering how much data it is transferring between the transmitter and the receiver. So I'm very happy with that. If you want to use the app, it's just very, very simple. All you need to do is to go into the App Store to download the Hollyview app and connect to the HoloLens transmitter Wi-Fi, which starts with, I think, HLD or something. Yes, the Wi-Fi starts with HLD and there's a Wi-Fi password that you can find in the user's menu. So once you're connected to the Wi-Fi of the transmitter, you have the ability to look at the image on 
your iOS device or Android devices by opening up the Holly View app right here. Just wanna make sure that it's not reflective and you just need to hit connect and there you go. So you're looking at the exact same image as you can see on the monitor using the receiver compared to the app. And as we observe, for some reason, the app is actually a little bit faster when it comes to latency. I don't know why, but that's always the case for video transmitter that comes with Wi-Fi capability, but that's a good thing. The only downside of using the app compared to the actual receiver is usually the distance and signal strength. So there might be interfer like a little bit more interference when it comes to using the app. And also the signal distance is not as good as using the actual receiver. So that's one thing that you really have to keep in mind. Within the app, you have a lot of tools that you can use. And here are some of them. You have waveform, you have histogram, you have focus beaking, zebra, and stuff like that, like save guide or like frames. If you want to adjust the settings within the app, all you need to do is to tap and hold onto that specific tool and you have the ability to adjust, let's say the zebra level to a different level. So this is a very, very powerful app that you can utilize when you are using the HoloLens Mars 4K. I would highly recommend you guys to try to download the app onto a device that you own that you can lend to your client on set so they don't have to download the app and connect to the Wi-Fi and all, do all these things just to look at the footage. If you have an iPad mini, which is what we have and what we use usually when we want to show the client the footage using a wireless video transmitter and they are super happy with it. So that's my strongest suggestion when you're using devices like this. The Mars 4K from HoloLens can connect up to one receiver, two iOS or Android devices or two receivers. So you do the math or four iOS devices and four Android devices. And yeah, this is how you can set up the HoloLens Mars 4K. That's it. Those are our thoughts on the HoloLens Mars 4K wireless video transmitter. It is definitely very impressive to be able to transmit high quality footage wirelessly at such a budget friendly cost. We really appreciate companies like HoloLens for working so hard to bring professional filming technology to the consumers. We can't wait to see what they will bring in the future. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Have you used a wireless video transmitter before? Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.